In 1881, a German biologist, T.W. Engelmann, identified chloroplasts as the sites of photosynthesis. Most chloroplasts are seen in the mesophyll cells of leaves. If you take a cross section of a small part of this leaf and examine under a light microscope, you can see the leaf anatomy like this. Here, below the upper epidermis, we can see vertically elongated palisade parenchyma cells. Below the palisade tissue layer are the layers of oval shaped spongy parenchyma cells. Palisade and spongy parenchyma cells together form the mesophyll tissue in leaves. Even though both palisade and spongy parenchyma cells contain chloroplasts, palisade parenchyma cells contain more chloroplasts than spongy parenchyma. Most of the photosynthesis takes place in the palisade cells. Now if you go for a higher magnification of a single palisade cell, you may find about 40 to 50 chloroplasts. If we want to see the alpha structure of a single chloroplast, then we have to use an electron microscope. The transmission electron micrograph of a single chloroplast obtained using a transmission electron microscope is shown here. Now, let's learn about the structure of chloroplasts in detail. They are disc shaped. They are surrounded by a double membrane called the chloroplast envelope. The outer membrane contains porins and is permeable to metabolites of small molecular weight. But the inner membrane of the chloroplast is highly specialized with transport proteins. These transport proteins regulate the movement of metabolites into and out of chloroplast. In other words, the inner membrane is selectively permeable. The outer and inner membranes of chloroplast don't contain chlorophyll. The two envelope membranes are separated by a gap called the intermembrane space. There is a colorless fluid within the chloroplast called stroma. Stroma contains the enzymes responsible for carbohydrate synthesis. In addition to the inner and outer membranes of the envelope, chloroplasts have a third membrane system called the thylakoid membrane. This membrane forms a network of flattened sacs called thylakoids. The word thylakoid is derived from the Greek word thylakos, which means sac. Thylakoids are arranged in orderly stacks called grana, which resemble a stack of coins. A single stack of thylakoids is called granum. Each granum contains around 10 to 20 thylakoids. These are also called granal thylakoids. There is another type of thylakoids called stromal thylakoids. They join the granum stacks together and make the thylakoid membrane network a single compartment. Stromal thylakoids are also called stromal lamellae or frets. The space within the thylakoids is called the thylakoid lumen. Thylakoid lumen is filled with a fluid. Okay, now where are the photosynthetic pigments located? Chlorophyll and other pigment molecules are embedded in the thylakoid membranes. They are organized in special units called photosystems. Each photosystem is an assembly of 250 to 400 pigment molecules. There are two different types of photosystems, photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. We will learn more about photosystems later. In this trauma, you can also see strands of DNA and prokaryotic-like ribosomes, that is, sandiest ribosomes. Chloroplasts are cell organelles, right? Normally, we don't expect DNA to be present in a cell organelle. Have you ever wondered why chloroplasts have their own DNA and prokaryotic sandiest ribosomes? According to the endosymbiosis theory, chloroplasts were once photosynthetic bacteria, bacteria prokaryotes, and they got engulfed by a large eukaryotic host cell. Then the photosynthetic bacteria and the eukaryotic cells started a symbiotic relationship with each other. The photosynthetic prokaryotic bacteria provided important nutrients to the eukaryotic host cell and in turn these 
photosynthetic bacteria received protection and a steady environment to live in. Since chloroplasts were once photosynthetic bacteria, they have their own DNA and prokaryotic sandius ribosomes. Chloroplasts often contain starch grains and small lipid droplets which are the reserve food materials.